Hi guys, Cliff Olson, Doctor of Audiology and founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona. And in this video, I'm explaining exactly what earwax is, where it comes from, and how to get rid of it easily if it becomes a problem. Coming up. As an audiologist, one of the least glamorous parts of my job is having to constantly deal with copious amounts of earwax on a daily basis. I would bet that on some days, I remove so much earwax from my patient's ears that I could easily build an earwax candle like this. Now that's gross. As inconvenient and unappetizing as earwax is, everybody produces it, although some people produce more of it than others. In fact, approximately 5% of adults have impacted earwax in one of their ears, meaning their entire ear canal is filled with earwax. And a whopping 57% of nursing home residents have problems with earwax as well. While it is necessary to have some earwax inside of your ears to protect against dust, germs, and other bacteria, you do not want to have too much earwax because this can lead to earaches, itchy ears, a feeling of ear fullness, or a temporary hearing loss, and even tinnitus. So what is earwax? And where does it come from? And why does it build up so much in some people's ears and not others? Well, this is all stuff that I will cover inside of this video, but before I get into it, if you could do me a huge favor and click the like button, it really helps out my channel. And if you are not yet subscribed to the channel with notifications turned on, go ahead and do that as well, because that ensures that you never miss one of my newly released release videos and I release a ton of new videos every single week. That being said, I really appreciate it and a huge shout out to Eosera for sponsoring today's video but more on them in a little bit. In the medical world, earwax is known as cerumen and it is comprised of three different things. It has waxy secretions from the ceruminous glands of the skin inside of the ear canal. It has dead skin cells from the ear canal as well as hair from the ear canal. Now please indulge me as I get technical here for just a minute. Skin is the largest organ of the human body and it lines pretty much everything, including your ear canals. Inside of your skin, you have glands, and these glands secrete different substances, mainly sweat and other oils. Let's talk about the glands inside of the skin on your arm. Most of these are called eccrine glands that produce a mostly watery substance called sweat and sebaceous glands that secrete sebum, also known as skin oils. These types of secretions serve to keep your skin cool, which is exactly why you sweat more when you exercise, and to keep your skin and hair lubricated. On the other hand, the skin of your armpits, your hair, and your, um, nether regions also have different glands called apocrine glands. These glands secrete a more oily substance that has more proteins and lipids, also known as fats. When these apocrine secretions mix with bacteria on the skin's surface, they start to stink, which is why your armpits smell if you haven't showered in a while. Now let's talk about the glands inside of the skin of your ear canals. These are called ceruminous glands, and they are a modified apocrine gland that secrete more of a waxy substance. When these waxy ceruminous secretions inside of your ear canal mixed with dead skin cells as well as hair that is sloughed off of the skin, you have what is known as earwax or cerumen. Quick question for you, have you ever done genetic testing through 23andMe? If you have, the results may have indicated whether or not you're the type of person who will have a wet sticky wax or a dry flaky wax because this is determined by the gene ABCC11. If you have one or two copies of the C variant, you have more fat inside of your waxy secretions, which makes your earwax more sticky. If you have two copies of the T variant, that means that you have less fat in your ceruminous secretions and your earwax will be more flaky and dry. However, no matter what variant you have, if you produce a lot of earwax, it can create a problem regardless. Now, in most cases, earwax will naturally migrate its way out of your ear canal, but this doesn't always occur if you produce a ton of earwax, if you have really small ear canals or really bendy ear canals, or if you wear earbuds all the time or even hearing aids, this can prevent the natural migration of this earwax and then it can build up inside of your ears. When this happens, you either need to remove the earwax yourself or have it professionally removed by an audiologist like me. If you prefer to remove your own earwax, that's totally cool, but some methods work better than others. For instance, using a cotton swab to try to clean the earwax out of your ear canal can turn into a complete disaster. Not only can it push earwax further inside of your ear canal,
now creating a bigger problem than you originally had. But if you go too far, you may actually rupture your eardrum, which will be extremely painful and it can lead to a permanent hearing loss. Instead of using a cotton swab, using eardrops like Earwax MD from Eocera, today's video sponsor, is a much more effective and safer option. Earwax MD was specifically formulated with glycolic acid as well as sodium and potassium bicarbonate, which hydrate and break down the chemical bonds of cerumen so it can be flushed out of your ears. Most other over-the-counter earwax removal drops use an oil-based solution that includes carbamide peroxide, which is not as effective as you may think. Just look at this side-by-side -side test tube comparison of a leading carbamide peroxide solution on the left-hand side of your screen versus Earwax MD on the right-hand side. You can easily see how the Earwax MD solution is breaking down the earwax while the earwax in the carbamide peroxide solution does almost nothing. So now that you've seen the comparison between these two different types of eardrops, I'm interested to know which one you think would be better at breaking down your earwax so you can flush it out of your ears. The Earwax MD solution or the carbamide peroxide solution? Go ahead and leave your answers in the comment section. Earwax MD is so effective that it is the only eardrop solution that I use inside of my clinic because it makes earwax removal and cleaning ears so much easier and faster. I would just recommend that you don't let your earwax get out of control. Clean your ears out on a weekly basis using a product like Earwax MD so you don't always have to go in to see a hearing care professional to get the earwax removed. That being said, over-the-counter products do not replace a trip to the doctor if a trip is warranted. If you would like to get some Earwax MD for yourself, you can either click the link in the description below or you can go to your local pharmacy like Walmart, CVS, or Walgreens. There's a reason why there are so many videos of earwax removal on TikTok and YouTube. There are literally thousands of them showing removing different types of earwax with different tools and techniques. That's because earwax buildup is a massive problem, not just in the United States, but worldwide, and people have no clue how to get the earwax out of their own ears themselves. But now that you know what earwax is, where it comes from, and how to remove it yourself, you should be able to prevent it from becoming a big problem for you.